Now let's add some wood to the wood pieces of our character. So we've got the cowl, we've got the belt and some of the side pieces. And these are gonna exist on the wood texture set, which you can see all the pieces of that here. So what we can do now is go ahead and into the smart materials, there are several different kinds of wood. And of course you can always also go to substance source to look for different woods there. And it's nice because we can just drop several of these on at once and kind of see the different effects. Okay. So it gives us a chance to see the different looks on our model. This is really, really rough and I don't think it goes with the character. So I'm probably not going to use that one. This one, same kind of thing. It's really, really, uh, it's raw, which could be kind of a cool look uh, to have a okay, raw wood, but I feel like it's a little bit too rough as well. And so I really like this one, but it's a little bit too red. And so we can go into the folder and you can see there are several different layers here. So let's scroll down to base and the base, we have a gradient here for the base. And so I'm gonna choose uh, some different colors and maybe kind of desaturate some of that a little bit. If you can see that happening there. And then let's go on this color and sort of desaturate that as well. And that's probably a little bit too much. So let me add some color back in. Okay, so something like that. We can also go into these different layers. Here's the wood fibers and you can see the scaling that we have here. So we could increase or decrease the scaling amount. Maybe set that to three. Here's our medium wood fibers. We'll maybe scale that up to three as well. And our wood fiber is small. You can see what all those indicate. If you wanna blend some of those fibers out a little bit, you could do that. We do have some dirt, creating some darkness in the crevices there, which is nice. We can also bring in a fill layer and let's just drop it in the curvature map and we'll blend it over the top and use a soft light and then dial down the intensity just a little bit. Okay. And it's still, I don't like the, the grain as much. So I'm going to come to the base and I'm going to scale this up a little bit more and I want to kind of de-emphasize some of the grain. So I'm actually going to add another layer. So let's add a fill layer. I'm just going to add it at the bottom and on our base color, I'm going to go ahead and make this kind of uh, a yellowy kind of a color, kind of like that. And I'm going to blend this bottom part down a little. And then on all these fibers, I'm going to take the visibility of those down just a little bit. Those are already down pretty far. So it's a little bit more like that. Now I do want to still have the red. So I can come in here and play around with the color that I'm blending with. That's kind of more of the look that I want right there. Something like that. And then if you want to paint some extra kind of dirt or anything on there, you can do that as well, just with another paint layer. So now we have all of our textures created in Substance Painter. Before we export any textures out in the next clip, let's take a look at some of the ways where we can really get a nice view of our models as we're working. So up to this point, we've been using the uh, HDR lighting from an image, but we haven't really modified any of the post effects yet. And so we're gonna come into the display settings. And if we come down, you can see there's a shadows checkbox where we can turn that on. And the shadows from the light will start to be added to our scene. Here we can control the environment, which is using this panorama image. We can rotate it, we can blur it out. We can see the actual environment. And you can see it's blurred out, so we could unblur it. So you can see the actual image that's being used. Okay, we can also come down to the post effects, turn those on, and we could use things like vignetting. And so turn that on, increase it, and you get a nice black vignette around the edges of your frame which can create it kind of a really dramatic effect. Okay, and this is just for viewing here uh, inside of Substance Painter, but if you're working on a project and you need to get a quick image out and you don't have time to go into your game engine or into your renderer, you can quickly create an image from here. You've also got, in addition to painting mode, you've got uh, iRay where you can render this out as well, which will be a little bit nicer of an image. We can also choose to add depth of field if we want. If we scroll that open, there's anti-aliasing, we've got subsurface scattering, lots of different ways that we can change the display. Now, if we come up to the, uh, the camera, if we have depth of field on, which you can see here, we'll need to come up to our camera and decide our focal distance. So let's dial the aperture up a little bit and then let's 
dial this focus distance down and you can see right there is kind of the face. We can kind of dial this aperture back and depending on your model, if it goes off into space a little bit, you'll see that a little bit more dramatically. And so, but you can see this is kind of out of focus, whereas the face is more in focus. And so you can play with those effects as well. You can just turn that off and you're back to where you were. All right. So the post effects are a really cool way of getting a nice uh, image here. Usually I'll have those, uh, some of those things off as I'm painting, but maybe at the end, go in and check and see how things are looking. So let's do any last minute fixes here. Uh, if you wanted to come in and let's say, go to the body and go into maybe the jumpsuit and let's add a new layer in there. Go to paint, right click, turn everything off but height, make that height a little bit higher. You could come in and start to add and get a nice soft brush there. You could start to come in and add some additional wrinkles. So if there's any wrinkles that, that weren't added kind of in the sculpt, you could come in and add those. And I'm just gonna do this really, really roughly. And maybe in here. So, you know, something like that. Okay, now those are too sharp, and so I'm gonna add a quick filter, and that's gonna be a blur filter. All right, so we can blur that out. And just add them back in just a little bit. If you wanna add some extra, kind of extra level of detail uh, on there. Now you can see we've got an issue on the roughness of this part, so let's take a look at that while we're here. Yeah, so we can see we've got some paint there from probably from this dirt. Yep. And so we need to make sure that we mask out this particular area. All right, fixed up. And then we've got our wrinkles on there. So things like that, you know, there's always time to go back in and modify and change things wherever you want to add. That's the great thing about Substance Painter. It's so flexible. You can go into any of your texture sets, go in and modify things, change things, change colors really, really quickly. You don't have to worry about editing a texture map right? You're editing these different layers. And then in the next clip, we'll show you how Substance Painter takes all the stuff that we've piled together and created to get the look that we want and export those as textures that we can actually use in whatever application that we're using. In this case, we're going to be bringing this into Unity as a real-time model. So we need to be able to have textures that will work inside of Unity. So we'll do that next.